Evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to our fifth, count it, fifth selection section show, number five, guys. Holy cow, where has the time gone? I'm Tom, by the way, for those who haven't been here for the last four selection sections, British name Thompson, and we're finally off the campaign trail, thank God, and ready well, more than ready, actually, to start our next journey. As hard as it was getting to 1939's Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, we do hope it'll be easier and maybe just a little less depressing to get to this new destination. I know I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So before we let Josh reveal the destination film, we'll be getting to six weeks from now. And for that... I'll send things over to Dan to give a bit of a recap on our last couple journeys and a recap of the rules. Dan? Thank you, Tom. Hello, everyone. I'm Dan, British name Nigel. And if you're new to the podcast, welcome. And if you've been here for a bit, welcome back. Selection Section 5 is underway, and I personally couldn't be more excited. I mean, we've completed now four journeys, 32 episodes, more than two dozen movies are now under our belts, ranging from aliens to sharks to killer clowns and now killer politics. But if you are new to the podcast, whether this is your first episode or maybe you you came on board for during last week's Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, uh, we have a bit of a system to our podcast. We don't just watch movies randomly. We pick a destination movie. Uh, And every six weeks, we work towards that destination. And how we work towards that destination is we take an actor or an actress from the last movie we watched and move them to the movie we're going to watch that current week. Kind of like uh, the game Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, though Kevin Bacon is not the end goal for our journeys. And we've actually only done, I think, one Kevin Bacon film so far. And it wasn't even really a Kevin Bacon film. He was just in the movie. But that's how we do it. So, for example, our first destination was Independence Day. Wow, that feels like forever ago. But it was our first destination was Independence Day, and we got there from Top Gun. So we took Meg Ryan from Top Gun, moved to Inner Space, then took Dennis Quaid from Inner Space, moved to The Right Stuff, then took Ed Harris from The Right Stuff, and moved to Apollo 13. Took Bill Paxton from Apollo 13, moved to Predator 2, and then took Adam Baldwin from Predator 2, and moved to Independence Day. And then for our next destination was Jaws. So we went from Independence Day to Jaws, connecting movies through the actors from Jaws to Independence Day, and so on and so forth. And we haven't missed a beat yet. Literally, we just did Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. And if you work really hard at it, it links all the way back to Independence Day. Actually, it links all the way back to Top Gun. Actually, it links all the way back to Pathfinder. (laughs) Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Oh, yeah. It links all the way back to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, which is the early episodes we didn't have this format yet. The only prototype format we had was we were taking an actor or an actress from the movie we watched the week before and moving them down the line. And that's where we're at today. So I'm going to send this things over to Josh now. He's going to reveal where we're heading next. And just like before, we're going to take someone from Mr. Smith and move them to our next destination in six weeks. Josh, what are we watching in six weeks? Well, uh, um, th- th- uh, th- thank you, Dan. Um, hi, uh, I'm Josh. Uh, um I'm a British name, uh, Reginald. Um, uh, hang on, just uh, let me loosen my tie and take off my glasses here as I reveal the next destination movie. We've already told you what movie it is in past episodes, so I won't fly through it. However, you will believe a man can fly as we go up, up, and away to the classic 1978 film Superman, starring Christopher Reeve, Gene Hackman, and Margot Kidder. So I hope you're excited, because I am. I absolutely <laughs> love this movie, and I'm very looking forward to getting to it. But now for the selection part in the selection section. We're each going to be presenting movies that go from Mr. Smith Goes to Washington to Superman. Each list is going to have six episodes, and all of them are going to end in Superman. So now I'm going to go ahead and hand this over, and hopefully it isn't glowing green with... with, And hopefully it isn't glowing green to kill Tom. (laughs) So here you go, Thompson. I'm going to hand this over to you now. And I hope it doesn't kill you. Well, you don't have to worry about me, Josh. I, um, I'm bulletproof, baby. Even Kryptonite can't stop me. So this one, I'm going to say, guys, 
it was a lot easier to come up with a list to go from yeah. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington to Superman. Oh, boy. That's for those that were not there for the last selection section, number four. Go watch that episode. We discussed to a little bit of detail some of these struggles and creative ways we had to go to link a 1939 film to a 2017 film, Asterix, most of the people from the 2017 film weren't even born in the 20th century. So that was a fun journey. Right. We we all still found ways to get two lists, but we really well, had to work on it. <laughs> well, well, Tom, if I could just interrupt for just a second. Not only were most of the principal actors in It not born in the 20th century, a lot of the principal actors in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington were also not born in the 20th century. That's true. Oh my God, that's so true. And they were mostly dead by 1970. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that was part of the struggle. We went from 2017 to uh, 1939, and it was a bit of a struggle. So yes, I also admit it was a little easier going from 1939 to 1978. And keep in mind, we're also talking like we had to find legitimate actors and actresses, not just like, oh, that person like is oh. a background character in the films. Like, no, they had to be in it. Uh, like a perfect example is we can't use like Stan Lee in the Marvel films. You can't use him as a connector. It has to be somebody with some substance in the film. Some yeah. past um, links are forgiven because none of us had seen the movie and we didn't know how large their role was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if we were to use the Marvel movies as an example, spoiler alert for those five people that might be listening to this that haven't seen Iron Man yet, but at the end of Iron Man at the end credits, the Nick Fury scene, Samuel L. Jackson would count because that's a whole scene. He's mm -hmm. in an entire scene. That's more than a cameo, but Stan Lee doesn't because normally Stan Lee's bits in the Marvel movies is literally him turning to the camera and winking and nodding to the audience. And then just the audience acknowledging, oh, it's Stan Lee. He doesn't mm -hmm. count. And maybe the kid from Iron Man 3 would count in uh, Endgame. Maybe, but he's barely mm, in it I would, enough. I would honestly veto that one. You would veto he that one. He doesn't yeah, even have a, yeah, he, he doesn't he does. even have a speaking role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at the in end game. He doesn't say a word in end game. He just he's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with those limitations, you think fudge the rules a bit? No Boston listeners, we are dedicated to the cause. You can all play your six degrees of Kevin Bacon like a bunch of weenies. Like we have rules, goddammit. Yeah. We challenge ourselves. And this was this was actually challenging. I technically have a backup list in case you guys come up with a list too close to mine. The question is Actually, you know, I'm going to go strong for my first list. So I'm tentatively calling this list the heroes we need. And the theme of all of them generally involve heroes or detectives or people who were bad but become heroic. So for the first film, we take Harry Carey from Mr. Smith and go to Angel and the Bad Man. Okay. We're in... Well, a film about a outlaw who gets saved by, I think, a Baptist woman, and she kind of nurses him back to health, and he gives up his bad guy ways. But criminals and other you know people come to town and try to do bad things, and he's got to stop them. So he's a hero in that one. And also in that film is Irene Rich, who is also in the film Joan of Arc. 1948 film and actually a bit of a classic i remember seeing some scenes from that mentioned before i don't know where it stands in the top 100s list but i think it definitely fits in the top 300s list somewhere but again joan of arc you got a hero there also in this film was one ingrid bergman who also stars in the whodunits of whodunits murder on the orient express Classic murder on a train film. And one of those suspects on that film is the late, great Sir Sean Connery, who also rode in from the promised land in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And in that film was Robin Hood's dear, dear departed father, the Lord of Loxley, Brian Blessed, in the film Flush. Gordon! Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. And in Flash Gordon was one John Hollis, who is also in Superman. Heroes. 
heroes all in this list. It's a list full of movies I've never even heard of, let alone seen. Other than yeah. Robin Hood, Prince. Well, of let's put this. He gets to present the list, but we're yeah. probably not going to pick it. I um, think it's a darn fine list. So, uh, well, I mean, I'm I'm not going to completely shit all over it. I mean, I am, but uh, <laughs> okay. I, I've never heard of Angel and the Bad Man. I've I've not heard of this version of Joan of Arc. I have heard of Murder on the Orient Express. I've never seen it. I've seen um, the remake. I've heard of Robin. I've obviously seen in love and. I, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, but I don't know if I'd count Sean Connery in that movie. One, he's not even credited, and two, it's literally a cameo. Yeah, he like shows up at the very end. I was wondering. Yeah, like, yeah and he only has like he only has like one or two lines about giving the bride away or something like that. But it is a talking uh, role. It's a little bit more than uh, that. I, all honesty, I would say it's more. I would say it was if you um let Nick Fury and Iron Man count, I would I would let that one count. Yeah, I guess. Although the Nick it's Fury. A very, is a long, much longer scene than Sean Connery's literal cameo in Robin Hood. Like it's literally. Oh, you don't know that scene's less than twenty seconds long. <laughs> Incidentally, Angel and the Bad Man is a John Wayne film. Stars John Wayne and Gail Russell. So it's a well, it's an interesting list, definitely. I've not heard of any of those movies except. Are we talking about the lists now, or do we just want to present them now? You know what? We're going to talk more about the pluses and minuses. We can talk a little bit more about it, but... Um... Well, let's go ahead and present the lists, and then we'll go through and discuss them after. Come on, and then we'll, as we're trying to come through and figure out which ones we want, we'll go back through them, and we'll uh, discuss the merits and... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like that yeah. strategy. Uh, so I won't take up too much RAM and processing power here. So I believe, Nigel, what's your list number one? Okay, uh, my list number one is one I'm quite proud of. You can either call this one Cowboys and Lawmen, Ooh. or you can call this Heroes Rising, because a lot of these movies feature an actor or an actress in one of their earliest roles but each one of them became famous later on. So you can kind of see where they were, their star was risen mm -hmm. or the star started to rise. I should say. So we obviously, we take Jimmy Stewart from Mr. Smith goes to Washington and go to the shootest with John Wayne. Ooh. Uh, yeah. John Wayne's in the shootest with Jimmy Stewart and a young Ron Howard Ooh. who, who did direct uh, Apollo 13. So uh, we go to the shootest with John Wayne. We take John Wayne from the shootest and we go to, Brannigan, one of the only non-Westerns he ever did. It's actually his Fish Out of Water movie. He's a detective. He's like a Chicago detective who goes to England to catch a murderer or something like that. It's not one of his more well-known movies, but I think it's a good movie. But it, he plays off of and stars opposite one fantastic, we know him, he spared no expense, Richard Attenborough. So we take Richard Attenborough from Brannigan, or I'm sorry, we take John Vernon from Brannigan. I've, I'm, I'm sorry, I have my notes wrong. Richard Attenborough's in... Brannigan, but we're not using him. We take John Vernon, who plays the bad guy in Brannigan. John Vernon to Dirty Harry. Oh, you jerk. And yeah, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I've seen Dirty Harry, but I think John Vernon's the chief. And then from Dirty Harry, we take Clint Eastwood and go to a movie called The Rookie. This is one that the audience will love because it, it, it's got some pretty bad reviews. But um, <laughs> it's, it's one of Charlie Sheen's earliest roles. Clint Eastwood plays the grizzled detective, and Charlie Sheen plays the new hot-blooded detective. And uh, obviously, hilarity ensues. It's like, got like a five out of ten on IMDb, and it's got some <laughs> oh, rough God. reviews. And it's got some pretty rough reviews. Like this, this is the one the audience will love because we will probably hate this film. We do it for the art, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So, anyways, so from the rookie, we take the aforementioned Charlie Sheen and all of his tiger blood, and we move to Young Guns. Ooh. Which actually is a movie that stars a lot of actors who later on became pretty famous. And uh, from Young Guns, we take Terrence Stamp and go to Superman. Good, old good list. Yeah, Terrence Stamp. I say of this list, I've never seen The Shooters or Brannigan. Uh, I've heard great things, especially Brannigan. A friend of ours was talking about that unrelated to this. Like, oh, John Wayne Brannigan like such a good film. I haven't seen it in so long. It's like... And that you brought it up, it's like, ooh, and Dirty Air, Harry. I've seen once, loved it. Young it's, Guns, I've seen the sequel too, but I haven't seen the first one. Oh, go ahead, Josh, you were saying? I was saying uh, The Rookie. Which one was that one about? It's a um, old cop, butts heads with young cop kind of movie. I, Clint Eastwood's The Grizzled Veteran, and Charlie Sheen plays a hotshot rookie detective or something like that. 
So yeah, it's kind of, I guess it, it was made during the time when Lethal Weapon was popular. Well, yeah. It's not a bad list. Uh, we got at least one that we, well, technically, for me, two that I know are good, Superman, Dirty Harry, two that I'm definitely interested, well, three, because Young Guns, because the sequel is all right, but I want to see the first one. And come on, The Rookie, I mean... We're going to have a dud somewhere in our list, no matter what. But the audience loves the duds, though. We may not like the duds, but the audience loves the duds. And who knows? This might be a hidden gem. We might be like, you know what? This movie wasn't all that bad. Or it might be another swashbuckler. We don't know. Yeah, but given our track record, it's probably not. So that's my (laughs) list. I'll debate the merits of it here in a bit. Josh, I believe you're up next. Well, thank you, Nigel. I call this list Expected Heroes with a question mark. So, We're all going with the theme this time around, right off the bat. So we start by going, following Jimmy Stewart to uh, How the West Was Won, 1962 Western. From there, we take Carol Baker to Kindergarten Cop. I'm going to take by your silence that you love that movie. What, Kindergarten Cop? It's not a tumor. It's a, it's a great movie. <laughs> yeah, Carol Baker apparently plays the mother of the bad guy, or the grandmother of the kid, whatever. Oh my god, but, yes, that is her. Yep. Yeah. So, anywho, we take Kindergarten Cop, and we go via Arnold Schwarzenegger to Total Recall. (laughs) And uh, you'll like this one, because technically, this isn't a rewatch, but we go from Total Recall via Mark Carlton to RoboCop. We go from RoboCop via Ronnie Cox to Captain America. Which one? There have been a couple ones. Captain America. Oh, my God. The the 1990s rubber suit. Ronnie Cox is yep. the president. He's no. the president in that movie. <laughs> oh, man. No, Josh, no. Damn it, Josh. <laughs> Earlier this week when you said, I may have a list that links us to Captain America, you didn't say it was this one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's right. He's That's right. He's the president in that movie. Oh, no. Oh, that no. movie's terrible. <laughs> yep, it's uh... Uh, we got the a 3.2 on IMDb. Oh, my God. It's got the, that's the one with the rubber ears and the plastic shield. Yep. And, oh, my yep. God. Yep. Josh, we all agreed no more painful films. The, <laughs> the Whistle Stop campaign trail made us cry. You're just hurting us now. Uh, Ned Betty is in Captain America, and he also uh, is in Superman as Otis. Yeah. So uh, that's how we get from Captain America to Superman. I hate this list already. <laughs> oh, God. Captain America. Oh, Josh. <laughs> you said that in chat earlier this week. You're like, I may have a list that links us to Captain America. And I'm not going to lie. When I put my list together, I was looking for that connection. I'm like, where the hell is this thing linking to Captain America? I pull up Captain America, Winter Soldier. I pull up, I pull up all three of the Captain America movies. The Marvel ones, the good ones. And I pull yeah. up all three of them, and I'm like, wait, none of these are linking to any of the movies that I've even come across. Yet, here we go, 1990s, rubber-eared, Ronnie Cox, plastic <laughs> shield, fucking terrible. I, I don't even remember the name of the guy who played Captain America in that movie. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I feel so. J.D. Salinger, that's who played him. Um, or no, he's related to J.D. Salinger. I, I don't remember his name. But oh my god, that was a streak of video, Captain America, nineteen. Oh, it was. Uh, it was not good. <laughs> really? yeah. it, it, it had a theatrical run, so it counts. But oh god, Josh. Matt Salinger. <laughs> Matt Salinger is the poor guy who played Captain America in that movie, and I feel so bad for him. The dad from A Christmas Story is in that movie too. Oh my god, mm, god, I just it's such a bad film. The only the only interesting tidbits could be if we watched that movie and went with this list would be it, it it would be so weird to see a movie that Marvel gave no shits about and constantly kept cutting their budget every day they'd walk in and find out that they didn't have this much money anymore. Mm-hmm. And like you find out that and to to the dichotomy of Marvel movies now where they just keep throwing money at them. Yeah. Especially you know? Captain America. Yeah. Because like in nineteen ninety, people people would ask uh Who's Steve Rogers? And nobody could answer it. But mm-hmm. like 2020, you ask who's Steve Rogers, and every kid's going to know because they're wearing his shirt. But that is my list, and I think this circles back to you, Tom. Hang on, I need a minute. <laughs> <sighs> I had some flashbacks. I've seen 
the Ronnie Cox 1990s Captain America. I know what we're getting into. So if we pick that list... <laughs> I, I haven't seen that movie since the 90s. Yeah, for good reason. Yeah. I eleven year old Dan. Eleven year old Dan thought that movie was awesome. Yeah, so did I, I. But at the same time, I acknowledge as in a grown up that I was a kid watching that movie. It was crap. It doesn't even have like the cheesy charm. Like Masters of the Universe is that is that same kind of mold where it was a movie where they kept constantly cutting the budget by a million dollars every day, and then by the end of the movie, Skeletor and He Man are having a sword fight in the dark because they literally don't have the lights on anymore. But Masters of the Universe has that, like, cheesy, so bad, it's good kind of charm to it. Plus, Dolph Lundgren's just kind of, like, likable. <laughs> like, you yeah. Know, he's not, you know, it's not a good movie, but it's, like, it's a movie that you can have fun watching. Captain America has none of these redeemable qualities. No, no. That will be the swashbuckler. <laughs> but we would go into this movie knowing that. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. true. So, actually, Josh, I was really torn between which of my lists to pick for my number two the fact that you're going with captain america 90s captain america i think i'm going to go for my second list it's tentatively called we can be heroes and we're going to start off the list with gene arthur who was in mr smith goes to washington and go into the classic western film shane which I've never seen, but it's referenced many times. Heck, Logan kind of riffed on it pretty heavily. But in Shane was one Van Helfen, who was also in the classic 1948 The Three Musketeers. Which but year? 1948. Ooh, I've yeah, never so, seen that version. Nor have I. But there is a actor in The Three Musketeers. One Tom Tyler, who many do not know, played the first movie adaptation of a superhero, The Adventures of Captain Marvel. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, God. Do not, oh, God, me, especially where, not yeah, you. How, where are you finding these movies? Hey, I didn't think it would be a connection either, but it popped up like, oh, this is almost too good to be true. But thankfully, we don't have to linger too far the World War II era because in Captain Marvel is one William Billy Benedict, who was also in the movie The Sting, classic caper film with one Robert Redford, who was also in A Bridge Too Far, a classic World War II film where they have to, well, catch a bridge. I think it was World War II. No, it's the movie about the Operation Market Garden failure. Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Nigel. And in A Bridge Too Far amongst many actors was one Gene Hackman, who was also in Superman. So I had another list, but I think this one just mirrors Josh's too well. And I like it because, again, Captain Marvel. No one's seen it. And if we're going to be watching Superman, we might as well be watching a film with the guy that was sued for being too much like Superman. Yeah, the uh, guy who basically went into Cold War with Superman until each of them became gods of the universe. And then what ended up winning out was money because <laughs> DC made more and bought out the rights to Captain Marvel. Yes. We know him today as Shazam. Yes, thank you, Josh. For those that uh, are like Captain Marvel, you mean the one chick uh, with the cosmic powers? Like, no. No, no, no. No. So that's my list, guys. I've seen this thing... And, we've, of course, we've seen Superman. I've not seen any of the other ones, so I'd be going in as blind as most of you. Yeah, that... Um, I don't know where you come up with these movies. <laughs> yeah, this I mean, like, the, the most obscure movies. <laughs> yeah, the 1948 version of The Three Musketeers. Like, there's a reason why that... There's got to be a reason why that one's not as fondly remembered as, like, the 1970s version or... Uh, the 1990s version that had, like, Kiefer Sutherland in it. Well, and, you know, if they had a catchy theme song like the 90s one did, maybe it would be. I mean, who's to say? I've seen A Bridge Too Far, good movie. Obviously seen Superman, good movie. I've heard of Shane, but um, never seen it. And I've seen The Sting, but not in a very long time. I've never seen The Adventures of Captain Marvel, and there's probably a reason why. Same with the 1948 version of The Three Musketeers. Which, real quick, also stars Gene Kelly and a very young Angela Lansbury, back when she was hot, and before she wrote Murder. That's false, because Angela Lansbury was born old. Also, it has Vincent Price as Cardinal Richelieu. 
Oh, okay. I do know that version. I've never watched it though, but I do now. I know know which one you're talking about with Vincent Price. But yeah, so that's my list number two right there, guys. That typing you're hearing in the background is me changing all the passwords and locking Tom out of this. So yes, that's smart. I I made such a good list that everyone's super jealous. I I get it. I understand. We're chatting offline here. Uh, we're saying how ways we can get rid of you without losing our three listeners. Yeah. Josh, during the selection section, episode four, mentioned that if he wins again, that he was going to just sit out the next time. I vote that, Tom, you sit out forever. No, that's not fair because he did come up with the Sink or Swim Summer Tour, and that was a good He list. did. He did. He that did. Was that was a good list. It gave us Swashbuckler and Dead Calm. Yes, it did. And honestly, as bad as those movies were, those episodes were amazing. <laughs> so, But you're not doing yourself any favors, Tom. No, no, no. Again, <laughs> I looked at my other list, which had some good films, but most of them kind of were depressing. So like, eh, we had enough with that in the Whistle Stop campaign trail. I don't know how good or bad Three Musketeers or Captain Marvel are going to be, but I'm pretty sure we're going to not want to cry at the end of them no probably not you you guys need to like pick more known movies because i don't recognize any of these movies well you might recognize some of the ones on my next list i call this list grumpy old men and the audience will love us so this has some similarities to my first list in that it starts with the shootest but it follows the theme of grumpy old men because that's john wayne's last movie ladies and gentlemen of of the audience. That's John Wayne's last film. And he plays an old retired, or well, I guess gunfighters don't really retire, but he's an old gunfighter and the West is now being civilized. Anyways, so grumpy old man, John Wayne in The Shootist. And then we take John Wayne from The Shootist and we go to True Grit. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, the John Wayne version of True Grit, which is just as fantastic as the Jeff Bridges version. And obviously he plays Rooster Cogburn, a grumpy old man. And in that movie was a young Robert Duvall. We take Robert Duvall to Days of Thunder, where Robert Duvall plays a grumpy old man to Tom's crew's young whippersnapper. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. From Days of Thunder, we take Tom Cruise, and we go to the latest version of The Mummy. This oh, is our, this oh is, my this God. Is our bad, this is our bad film, guys. This is our bad film. This is our bad film. And I've seen this one. This is so bad, it's good. And it's so bad, it's good that it goes back to being bad again. But anyways, we go to The Mummy where Russell Crowe plays the grumpy old man. So, oh, oh, God. So we take Russell Crowe from the new version of The Mummy, or the most latest version of The Mummy, and we go to The Quick and the Dead with Gene Hackman. Nice. Yeah, and Gene Hackman's the grumpy old man in that movie, and then we take Gene Hackman and go into Superman. Not bad. Not bad at all. I love that you both have gone out of your way to not just find bad films to add to your list but the most painfully bad of bad films oh yourself to thank for that because you know as much as we hate your lists we still have to give you some credit for as uh, dan already said the sink or swim summer tour because (laughs) if without that list we never would have discovered swashbuckler and dead calm so now it's kind of like we have to have shitty movies in our list just because we are masochists. Because Grit, I mean, is that the remake? No, no, no. This is, is the, original the original John. Okay. This is the original John Wayne version of True Grit, um, mm-hmm. where he he plays the same character as Jeff Bridges, Rooster Cogburn, and it has the same plot. It's just much different because obviously this one's made in the '60s or '70s, and the the, the remake's made in the 2010s. But it's a good film, really, really good film. And if you've seen the remake, don't expect that. Jeff Bridges played a version of John Wayne's character. Jeff Bridges' version of Rooster Cogburn is completely different from John Wayne's version of Rooster Cogburn. The only thing they have in common is they're both grumpy old men. I don't think I've ever seen the original True Grit. I don't think I've seen Uh, either. Quick and the Dead, what's that one about? It's a Western with um, Gene Hackman. I think he played... It's been so long since I've seen this film. Um, The last time I watched it was like on VHS. I got it my block or blockbuster or something like that. But Gene Hackman is running. Like, I think he's the mayor or he runs a town corruptly, an old West town. There's a tournament, I think a gunfighter tournament where they, the quick draw tournament and he's the best shot. So it's got a very young Leonardo DiCaprio in it. Russell Crowe, Sharon Stone. What uh, year did that come out? 1990 something. Yeah. It was directed by Sam Raimi. 
Uh, yeah, same Gregory, Gregory Peck. Peck. Uh, Okay. 1995. 1995. Yeah, it's got Lance Henriksen. It's actually got um, Jigsaw from the Saw movies in it. In fact, I think this is one of Russell Crowe's earliest roles. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because like we go from The Mummy, which is one of his most recent roles, to The Quick and the Dead, which is one of his earliest. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying The Mummy is not a good film. It's no, no not, it's, not. it's not. It's got some decent scenes and some pretty funny lines in it. Like I actually think Tom Cruise is legitimately funny in parts of that movie, but the movie mm-hmm. itself is awful. <laughs> it's, it's not a good film. Um, if I have to choose myself between the two lists that I presented, I like my first list a little bit better. Yeah. Um, well, well, let's wait till see uh, what Josh puts in for his last list and then we can like say which is best because maybe his second list would make him nope 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 we're going with this one not this one because just to... that's right we were all set to go on one of our two lists and then all of a sudden josh comes up with best of a bad situation last last <laughs> time and we were like yep we're doing that one yep yep josh the floor is yours again all right so uh i call this list every man exceptionalism <laughs> okay so uh, this one also starts with how the West was won, but this time we follow Debbie Reynolds to The Bodyguard, starring oh. Whitney Houston oh and Kevin Costner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we follow The Bodyguard via Bill Cobb to Oz the Great and Powerful. Oh, no. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, yeah. And then from Oz the Great and Powerful, we follow James Franco to Spider-Man. Okay, it's classic Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Yeah, that was the first one that came out in 02. From mm-hmm. there, we follow Jerry Becker to Rudy. Classic. Yep, and Ned Betty is in Rudy. I think he's uh, Rudy's father. So we follow Ned Betty to Superman. Oof, you guys really brought out the big guns with the bad films. Wowzers. Oz the Great and Powerful. See, I, I, I wish I had to... Uh, I wish I ran a couple more things because the last starfighter is within one of how the west was won but i I wasn't able to run it to find a lot any uh good lists from that one but i really wanted to come up with one of those because i wanted last starfighter oh that would have been such a good list oh wow well now i wish i had gone with my other list for my second list wow boy oh boy oh well i picked my list those are the lists i go with do we want to uh toss our third choices in Let's just toss the third list out. We've got time. But if we're yeah. going to stick with our big two, I have opinions on which one I'd aiming towards. But, okay, so list number three for me is tentatively called How to Make a Superman in Six Easy Steps or Reporters, Secret Identities, Flying, Justice, Crime, and Superman. And we start with Porter Hall, who was in Mr. Smith, and also in the classic Cary Grant film, His Girl Friday, where he plays a reporter. Porter Hall does not play a reporter, Cary Grant does, but Cary Grant also plays a man about town with the secret identity of a master thief in the classic Hitchcock film, To Catch a Thief. In that film also was Jesse Royce Landis, who is in a film we mentioned a few times, I think in the episode before last. Uh, we weren't sure if it was even a real film, Airport. Hmm. Oh. Yes. Uh, also in Airport was Jacqueline Bisset, who is in the classic 1960s detective film starring the king of cool himself, Steve McQueen, Bullet. Ooh. Yes. And in Bullet was one Robert Duvall and a film about a man who's mad as hell and can't take it anymore, Network. <laughs> In Network, the boss was played by Ned Beatty, who was in Superman. So that's my list number three right there. For me, all the films are good, or at least sound good. Network, though, it's so depressing. It's why I went with my We Can Be Heroes list as my number two. Yeah, I'm trying to stay away from too many dark films, because, yeah, we went through a lot of, like, depressing movies in uh, Whistle Stop Tour. Yeah, and Airport, from what I saw in, like, trailers, it looks so cornball, at least from the looks of it. I was like, uh, I don't want to just... Yeah, it'd be fun, but uh, we can be heroes. So that's, that was my number three uh, right there. Thoughts or comments on that one? I'm not sold on this list. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've seen one movie on that list, and there's one movie I want to see. Yeah, yeah, I like Superman, and I like Network, but Network is depressing, and I like Bullet. Mm-hmm. I feel like Bullet, because it has Steve McQueen in it, we'll get to it again at some point. Yeah, that's why I figure on that one, too. Same with Network, most of these films. His Girl Friday also is like a romantic comedy. It's where he winds up working with his ex-wife, and she's a reporter. He's like a um, 
newspaper editor and, you know, he's got to conspire to, you know, get her to break up with her new beau and, you know, hilarity ensues sort of thing. Like I said, it was backup list. I personally stand by my first list. I think it's pretty good. The Rookie's the only movie on that list that's like legitimately bad. Um, Brannigan is not the highest rated John Wayne movie, but it's considered like one of his weaker ones. Only because he's not a cowboy in that movie. He's he's a cop. And it, he, it's a modern day setting, which John Wayne didn't actually make a lot of modern day movies. Mm-hmm. At least modern to when he was alive. But since Josh hates it... Um, <laughs> Well, did you want to give a third list, Nigel? Because uh, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll give a third list. Um, I had this one was called Wars on All Fronts. It starts with How the West Was Won. Mm-hmm. And then we take Carl Malden from How the West Was Won and go to Patton. Ooh. Yeah. That a that's, a mar- that's a marathon, though. That's a long movie. That, mm-hmm. movie's got a, that movie's got an intermission in it. Anyways. And then we take George C. Scott from Patton and go to The Hustler. Oh my God! I've and, mentioned that how many times in my past list? <laughs> yeah, for the first time ever on the fire pit, we will go to the sequel, and we will take Tom Cruise and go to, or Paul Newman, and go to The Color of Money with Paul with Tom Cruise. And then we What's take that's Tom, the sequel to The Hustler. It's the sequel okay. to The Hustler, but the, they're like the movies are almost twenty years apart. And then um, from The Color of Money, we take Tom Cruise and we go to The Firm. With Gene Hackman, and then we go to Superman. Mm. I yeah. like The Hustler. It's a depressing as hell film. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah. but again, this is um, I've I've got to say it's not the strong. I can see why this was not one of your big two right here, Nigel. Mm-hmm. It's I mean these are good films. The Firm, I I love The Firm. Or have I seen the firm? I think I've seen yeah, the firm. I stayed away from this list because a lot of the, like you said, the hustler's kind of depressing. The firm is kind of depressing. The color of money is kind of depressing. Um, yeah. it, like that would probably be one we'd almost have to watch in two nights. Two like, parts, yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. like a, almost a four hour movie. I, that's kind of why I avoided it. Cause like I had a lot of fun on the whistle stop campaign trail, but once we got to wag the dog, every fucking movie was depressing as hell. And then even Mr. Smith was uplifting, but the story to Mr. Smith was pretty depressing with Washington eating this young, naive guy alive. The reason why I went with my first list as my my primary list is because all of these movies are fun. They're fun movies to watch. All right, so uh, Josh is biting at the chomp. So no, you got number three there, Josh? I do. Um, I call this, well, shit. <laughs> Apt name, I'm sure. So this one again, and Tom, listen here. Starts with How the West Was Won. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a similar route to uh, Kindergarten Cop. But uh, this is where we start to deviate. We go from Kindergarten Cop to Terminator 2, Judgment Day, via mm-hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we go from Terminator 2 via Xander Berkeley, who was John Connor's foster father, to uh, Taken. Oh. With, oh, okay. with Liam Neeson. Okay. So then we follow Liam Neeson to Star Wars Episode One. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. And uh, who is in episode one, you ask, that is in Superman? Well, one Terrence Stamp, Zod himself. That's right, There's... he's Chancellor Valoran. Yeah. There, there we go. Uh, nice, very cleverly done on uh, list number three there, Josh. I know it's similar to your above list every man exceptionalism Mm -hmm. and expected heroes too of your three you committed to uh the expected heroes was definitely the stronger one just because captain america is a bad film and star wars episode one is a bad film but they are uniquely bad and i Mm -hmm. think if we're gonna have fun with a bad film let's have captain america fun yeah that's my take on it anyways. Like, I think you guys, like, I, I really like Dan's second list. Well, I think I'm kind of biased against uh, Quick and the Dead. That's a Western, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I'm like, there's three Westerns in there, and I've never been a Western fan, so call that bias on that one. But if I was to choose a list, I would say probably Grumpy Old Men, one, and then uh, probably Cowboys and Lawmen, number two. Okay. Well, it's, I think we're now getting into the discussion part of yeah. this. So I think we've uh, laid down our list, guys. So let's go through and you know see what we want to go with. Whoa, 
Welcome back to the Fire Pit and our fifth edition of the Selection Section. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and hero of the day, Tom. And I brought tiny cucumber sandwiches and a gentle lemon tea to help lower those stress levels of yours. Because real heroism is in the gentle details. We just finished our Whistle Stop campaign trail to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and are now ready to go up, up, and as far away from Washington as we can and into our next destination film, the classic 1978 Superman, starring Christopher Reeves. And having spent the last six weeks getting to Washington, and having lingered just a little bit with Mr. Smith goes to Washington, we know a bit about the democratic process now. So if you want to make your voices heard, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just put fire pit in the subject line and what it is you're emailing about, whether it's to have an ad featured on our podcast, a destination film we should aim for, a journey of films to utilize, critiques about our lists, or if you just want to ramble at us and let us know in the email what's going on. From there, we'll use our supervision powers to read your email faster than the speed of light, then race to the nearest phone booth, transform heroically into our heroic selves, and soar away without ever responding. Heroism is busy work, everyone. We have to get those kittens down from those trees as soon as possible. And again, that email is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Hark! That signal in the sky can only mean one of two things. Either I'm in the wrong superhero film, or it's time to get back to the show. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck! Whoosh! Whoosh! Flying noises! Flying noises! Whoosh! circle back to you tom what movies do you prefer uh well i mean barring you know i can't really vote for my own here um so honestly just looking at we have cowboys and lawmen which is a just a solid list that nigel produced i've seen dirty harry of course i know we all kind of pick films that were kind of lame mine being flash gordon it's such a good bad film. It's such a cheese and ham film. It's, you gotta love it. But Charlie Sheen, Young Guns, it's probably gonna be along the same lines going for that comedy angle of it. It might not be the best film we're gonna see if, of any of our lists we pick, but it's not gonna be the worst. We're probably gonna have fun with it. Charlie are Sheen, the rookie? are you thinking the rookie? The Rookie's the bad film in that list. Young Guns oh, is yeah, the yeah, yeah. Sorry, so I'm looking at your list. You have Charlie oh, Sheen yeah. in Young Guns. Yeah, The Rookie, excuse me, with um, yeah, Clint Eastwood. Uh, I, again, like and Charlie Sheen. I think we're going to have some fun with that. Not Young Guns, The Rookie. Thank you, Nigel. Not our own. If we're going to champion any lists of our own, obviously, as much as it would be nice to see some of the old films, like the original Ca- Adventures of Captain Marvel, I'd have to go with the heroes we need from mine. Yeah, we've not seen some of these films, but most of them are pretty iconic. Uh, Murder on the Orient Express being one of those whodunits. I mean, Knives Out lifted a lot from that film. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, a 90s classic. Flash Gordon. I mean, you have Queen doing the soundtrack of that film. In fact, that was the first movie they ever did a soundtrack for. So so you got that at least. And it's just cheese fun. So if we're going to champion one of our own lists, that would be mine. But just being impartial, being honest, um, I kind of go with Cowboys and Lawmen. That would be my vote. Uh, Nigel. Anything but the ones that you presented. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just giving you a hard time. No. I take my vote back. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> honestly, I mean this 
in no disrespectful tone, your list contained a lot of movies that are very old <laughs> that, that maybe our audience probably isn't going to recognize. Cause hell, I don't recognize half of these. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never heard of angel and the bad man. And I kind of consider myself a John Wayne aficionado. So mm-hmm. I, I might've to turn in my card. I've heard of the original Joan of Arc. I've never seen. I've heard of murder on the Orient Express. I've never seen either version. I've not seen the re- the most recent remake and I've not seen this version. Obviously, Robin Hood, love that movie. For Lash Gordon is one of those so bad it's good kind of films. I think Queen be doing the soundtrack to that film makes it. Like, that's kind of why it it still has that cheese ball mm. factor. So if I was to go with any of your lists, it would probably be that one. Because I think once I get through Joan of Arc, it might be decent. Josh, since you hated all of our lists, I'm just going to go ahead and say I hate all of yours, too. So <laughs> Fair. If I was to pick... Which one of yours? It's the one with uh, Captain America. It's the least worst one. Like, because Captain America is a bad, bad film, but mm-hmm. I'd rather watch that than Star Wars Episode One. <laughs> like, I just would. I just, I fucking hate Star Wars Episode One. <laughs> I don't yes. want to watch that movie. I just don't want to watch any part of that movie. See, <laughs> you're just talking. I'm just hearing we need to watch this movie just to get Dan's reaction on tape. Oh, no, <laughs> no, because I'd, I'd have to watch it too. And I'm going to piggyback on Dan on this one since I didn't uh, give you a fair shake on just... your list, Josh. I'm with Dan. Expected Heroes of your list are the better of the list. Yeah, Expected Heroes is the better list. How the West Was Won is a decent film. Kindergarten Cop, I love it. It's one of those like guilty pleasure kind of movies. Uh, Total Recall, also love that movie. Robocop, enough said. Uh, Captain America, 1990. Um yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can get some discussions on that one uh and then obviously superman is a, is a great film if i can't champion my own list which i think cowboys and lawmen is my favorite i would go with expected heroes what about you josh if i had to pick a list of yours dan i would probably say grumpy old men would be my number one because the thing is i haven't seen a lot of the movies on cowboys and lawmen you know that thing about it, i don't think i've ever seen a full-on john wayne movie Really? Yeah, I'm just trying to think of a John Wayne movie I might have watched. I don't think I've seen any John Wayne movies ever. Like, I know enough about him to know some of the movies he was in, Mm -hmm. but uh, don't ask me to name them right now. But I would say if I had to rank Dan's, I would say Grumpy Old Men, then Cowboys and Lawmen. I just, uh, on your wars, on all fronts one, I look at uh, Patton and I my butthole clenches just at the length of it alone. Yeah, it's a long ass film. Like I'm yes. not gonna lie, it's a great film, but it's long. Mm-hmm. Tom, on yours, I would say I really don't even know. <laughs> like I don't recognize easily eighty percent of the movies on your list. I would say if the ones that I'm the most interested on would be your first list, the heroes we need, because I just re- I haven't watched the remake of Murder on the Orient Express. I love Robin Hood, and I'm genuinely curious about Flash Gordon. Apparently, the Queen of England loves that movie. Really, I yes. did not know that one. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Like, apparently, she, it's one of those movies she watches with her uh, grandkids, like, all the time, or she used to. Um, as far as your other list, yeah, I don't recognize any of those movies, and I'm almost afraid to find them. Well, Angel and the Bad Man, if it's any um, consolation, is about a 7 on IMDb. Joan of Arc, I'd need to look up. Uh, Flash Gordon, I think, is... Wow, holy shit, it's a 6.5. Wow, I was not expecting that. Uh, More than twice the movie that uh, Captain America is. Yes. Um, and but that's logarithmic, it's not uh, iterative. I, I kind of like this list of mine because, again, it's one of those ones we haven't seen most of these films. So uh, we're going in new, and we've, we had some fun with the uh, Sink or Swim summer tour, good and bad. Uh, it, it, I do okay, agree with I, you. I think that Cowboys and Llama is probably a better list. Well, I think it'd be a better list for us. Yes. Um, but Grumpy Old Men does have the original True Grit, which mm-hmm. is a big movie. And I don't think we'll be completely miserable watching The Mummy. It's just a bad film, but it's not swashbuckler bad. It's a stupid movie. <laughs> it's like, it's one of those, like, it wasn't, yes, it was. It was one of those movies where, like, Universal was trying to create their dark universe. Because yeah. it has and- Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in it. Right, yeah, well, that's who Russell Crowe plays, yeah. and they're establishing their new dark universe, and you're just like, why? Yeah, why does this need to be a thing? Yeah, and then um, Quick and the Dead is kind of a cult classic kind of movie. And but like, I, was, I wasn't, uh, like, 
I wasn't sold on that list until you said that was a Sam Raimi film. And I'm like, oh, I could do that. Yeah, it's a Sam Raimi film. It's a very early Leonardo DiCaprio and a very early Russell Crowe. Um, and it was Sharon Stone when she was at the height of her hotness. But it, I, I know if I had to go with one of my lists, I would probably do Expected Heroes as well. Because I just think that we're going to have a miserably good time watching Captain America. <laughs> well, on this one, um, for your Expected Heroes, RoboCop... And Total Recall are almost both destination worthy films. They so, are. They are. So and, we're and definitely... we have and we have watched Robocop recently, but this is not as part of mm-hmm. Yeah. And you got your other list that's got Terminator two on it. That's also a destination worthy. Yeah. yeah. And the more you talk about grumpy old men, the more you guys are kind of selling me on it, uh, just because the mummy it's and then there's Days of yeah, Thunder. That was a 90s movie that a lot of people who like Tom Cruise are very familiar with. If Top Gun was the movie that launched him into the stratosphere, mm-hmm. Days of Thunder is the movie that kind of kept him there. Yeah, um, it concreted him as, into fame. Yeah. It's, yeah, I love Days of Thunder, and I would love to watch it again. Like I, I, I would honestly say that Grumpy Old Men would probably be my choice. I love the movie. I don't know why. I love it. but It's cheesy 80s cornball fun, probably. I you mean, know, if I've we ever wanted that. to do an audible, too, Carrie Ooze is in the Days of Thunder. Who's Carrie Ooze? Oh, Ooze. yeah. The, 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 Robin Hood, a... Men in Tights. Yes, he is. Robin Men in Tights. <laughs> it wouldn't be a bad audible. Um, but also, as a meta sense, I kind of lean towards Cowboy and Lawman. If we went with Grumpy old men. I wouldn't complain either way. But another, the meta reason I also kind of lean towards cowboys and lawmen. They're all heroic. We got heroes in these films, mm-hmm. and it all does kind of fit a theme. Uh, at least that's in a meta sense. But yeah, that's, that's you guys. That been was, talking. That was ahead, what I, Well, that's what I went with with cowboys and lawmen too. Is that they're all heroes. It's all um, like in, in Young Guns, they all become uh, young deputy sheriffs, and they're they're going after the guy who or the person that killed. Um, well, I don't want to spoil too much of it, but um, the rookie's a cop movie. John, uh, Dirty Harry's a cop movie, or Dirty Harry or Harry's a gruff cop, but he's a good cop. Um, mm-hmm. And same with Brannigan. Brannigan, John Wayne's a gruff cop, but he's a good cop. Yeah. So, like I said, in the meta sense, I would still champion that. But if uh, the majority wanted grumpy old men, I'm not going to be hurting for that one. So, for the sake of Josh's sanity and sleep deprivation, are we going with grumpy old men? It sounds that's where the majority of everyone's aiming for. Of the list, I think it stands. I think yeah. it stands pretty tall. So for the sake of Josh's sanity here, I think uh, let's call it, guys. Nigel, you win the selection section. We oh, are yeah. going to first one I've won since Independence Day. Nice. Grumpy old men. So, Nigel, for the sake of the audio, why don't you tell the audience what we're going to be watching in this journey? We're taking Jimmy Stewart to the shootest, John Wayne to True Grit, Robert Duvall to Days of Thunder, Tom Cruise to The Mummy, Russell Crowe to The Quick and the Dead, Gene Hackman to Superman. Well done, uh, I really would love to be able to use that that song and uh, our thing, but I feel like copyright would hit us hard. Oh, yeah, Warner Brothers would sue. All right, so to keep flying with us through this journey, catch us on the Podbean site, firepit.podbean.com. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. So look up to the sky every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. to find new episodes as they soar on by. And if you're not the type to stand there and wait for a hero to save you, then come shout at us on mostly real time on our discord channel we don't have super hearing or telepathy but with discord you can let us know any ideas you have for movies or destinations or even journeys that you'd like to recommend check out the link in our episode description on firepit.podbean.com and you can join uh rob from rob's custom pcs and others in the discussion but if you want something more discreet than a proverbial fire pit signal shining in the sky there's also our email account for anything more private or business-like which you can hear mentioned in our interspersal segments and i just want to give a shout out to my parents and my stepbrother who have said that they look forward to listening to these episodes. I mentioned it today when I was spending time with them and they said, Oh, shoot us a link. So, um, yeah, this is what I do when, uh, you all are doing family things and I have to bugger out early. So hope you see that it is totally worth it guys. 
And I'll give a special shout out, obviously, to Peggy, friend of the channel, uh, the OG friend of the channel. And now I think our boss, we're still trying to get to the bottom of what exactly we all were running for last time. And another special shout out to my mother, who had actually listened to the Flight of the Phoenix episode. Loved it because it's one of her favorite movies of all time because she loves Jimmy Stewart. And she's looking forward to listening to the Mr. Smith Goes to Washington episode. Thanks for listening, Mom. And I'm glad that you think I'm the coolest guy on the podcast. Bye. <laughs> Josh, any shout outs from your side? I guess just a shout out to Sync Lounge and Plex. Um, yeah. Shout out to other members on Discord, you know, Tyrick Thorne. Thank you for listening. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> and to all our other listeners out there, old, new, borrowed, and blue, thank you for joining us on these. And hopefully you enjoy it and keep spreading the word and keep that fire pit burning. But until next time, I've been Tom. I've been Josh. And I've been Dan. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. We're taking Jimmy Stewart to the shootest. John Wayne to True Grit. Robert Duvall to Days of Thunder. Tom Cruise to The Mummy. Russell Crowe to The Quick and the Dead. Gene Hackman to Superman. Fly into the hero's journey with Tom, Dan, and Josh and race faster than a speeding bullet towards the superhero films of superhero films, Superman! You will believe that a fire pit can fly! <laughs> <laughs>